There's something that lives in my brother's room while he's away. I didn't notice it at first, since we were always out of the house at similar times, but I began to hear the noises when school started up again. The year before, my brother graduated, so we no longer shared rides to and from school together. He had to save up money for college, so we picked up a job at our local grocery store. They were very generous with his salary, knowing what he was working towards, but he had to get up very early in the morning. I would miss him, but I didn't mind. He promised that we would still see each other when I came home from school, which is why the noises that morning confused me. I was getting ready for my first day in the Jack and Jill bathroom that my brother and I had always shared growing up, when I heard the familiar creaks and groans coming from the mattress in my brother's room, as if someone had been laying on it and rolled over, I put down my mascara wand. Eddie? I thought you had to work this morning, I asked, confusion evident in my tone. But I received no answer other than the soft breathing of someone in a deep sleep. I remember thinking that Eddie must have slept in, Instead of waking him, I wanted to double-check with my parents first, making sure that he wasn't sick or had the day off or something. Fully intent on doing just that, I walked out to the railing, overlooking the kitchen below on the left, to see my parents sharing a laugh and a pot of coffee. Back then, our family had lived in a house of my mother's own design. It was a two-story building, but the second story was fairly open. It had an open stairway pushed against the wall that separated my parents' room from the foyer, which led to the upstairs hallway, which was completely open on both sides, only closed off once it reached mine and my brother's respective bedrooms. Mom? Dad? Doesn't Eddie have work today? Their faces snapped up to mine in surprise. Yes, of course, my dad had answered, his brows furrowed. Why? Are you worried about how you'll get to school? I already told you I'd take you, until you got your- No, it's- it's not that. I just was wondering why he's still home. What? My mother answered that time, her voice high-pitched in confusion. Eddie left hours ago. I even saw him off myself. Then who is in his room? I had mumbled the last part to myself turning to go back down the hallway, stalking slowly towards my brother's room, a chill up my spine and goosebumps dancing on my skin. With a heavy weight in my stomach, I pushed his door open ever so slightly to see absolutely nothing. I unhunched my shoulders as I made my way further into the room, inspecting his bed fully. I figured I must have just imagined it, chalking it up to my recent lack of sleep due to the new school year. And with that, I dropped the subject completely from my mind, I had bigger things to worry about anyways. Life continued on as life naturally should. I studied for my tests, made friends, helped out around the house, and completed other mundane tasks, the days melting into one another to the point where, if it weren't for the changing calendar, I would have thought I was repeating the same day over and over again. Life was normal, there were no strange noises, until winter break had begun. My brother had to work on the holiday. Well, I say had to because he was the only employee willing and desperate enough to do it. So I was all alone, my father at his own job, and my mother out shopping. I didn't mind being alone though, I always found a calming peace with being with oneself. But then I heard it again. I had just finished washing my hands and had shut off the water only to hear it filling up the empty silence. The sounds were different this time. The breathing was heavier, and I could hear the sheets rustling as if someone was tossing and turning. I froze in place, fear trickling up my body, worried that whatever it was, it could hear me too. I knew it wasn't my brother. I heard his car leave, and it was still missing from the driveway. What the hell is in that room? I leaned down ever so slowly, careful that I didn't make any noise, and peeked under the door. There was a horrible feeling that overtook me, as if I shouldn't have been looking for it at all. It was sickening, to the point where I wanted to vomit, and I didn't even see anything. Well, not really. All I could manage from my crouched position were the sheets on my brother's bed, all bunched up as if someone was inside them. I remember shooting up as quickly as humanly possible, running out of the bathroom and down the stairs, trying to put as much distance between me and that thing as I could manage. 
I couldn't stop my body from shaking, nor the heavy breaths that escaped my mouth, no matter how hard I tried. Tears made their way down my cheeks, and I covered my mouth with my hand to hold back a sob. I didn't know what was happening to me. It was as if some sixth sense had warned me of incoming danger. I simply couldn't control the negative emotions that were taking over my body. I locked myself in my father's study to try and get a grip on what exactly just happened. I just freaked myself out, right? I sounded like a crazy person, talking to myself out loud. I got so overworked from my stupid, tired hallucinations. I had tried to reason with myself, but that sixth sense told me it was a lie and that I had every right to be scared. I've never really believed too much in the supernatural. I'd always been too much of a skeptic, but the whole encounter just seemed to scream ghost to me. As I was already in the study, I decided to do a simple search on the computer. I didn't really believe in ghosts, but what else could explain what just happened? I had pulled up the search engine when a thought struck me. This is a new house. My mom had built it herself. And no one had died here as far as I knew. So what the fuck? Unless, I had said out loud as I typed into the search bar. I hit enter after placing my address into the type box. I had to find out if there were other houses here before ours. But nothing came up. Maybe there wasn't even a way to see if anyone had been here before, and I was pretty sure that this was an undeveloped area before my family had even come through. Who's to know what could have happened on this lot ten or a hundred years ago? I was starting to drive myself mad with the possibilities. How many bones were buried under the house where I lived, too old and withered to even be discovered? Maybe I'm just crazy. The thought seemed to be the more rational explanation an acute cabin fever I may or may not have developed. I knew I just needed time out of the house, whether to clear my head or to be away from that thing. I'm not sure. So, as much as I could, I spent time out with my friends or shopping with my mom, or sometimes I even just took a walk down the street, anything to keep me out of there. And it worked for a while, but as soon as I got comfortable again, the noises returned, so I let them be. I'd just have to live with them. I wouldn't let them bother me, and I would never ever tell anyone about what I heard. I knew I'd be brought in for counseling at the least. No one would believe me. The noises would vary each day, from sleeping to groaning or even to living noises like typing on a keyboard, drawers slamming, and various shuffling about. Those were easy to ignore, as long as I reminded myself that Eddie wasn't actually there, and that him being away had caused my brain to formulate these noises as a way of coping. Those were so easy to explain away. The growling was not. Every time it growled, the hairs on my neck stood up and I did all I could to get out of earshot as soon as possible. Some days, I wouldn't even go into our bathroom at all if I could help it. So this became my new routine living in fear of the thing that lived in my brother's room and desperately trying to pretend it wasn't there. This was my new mundane. And no one knew, not even Eddie. Now that I look back on it, I wish I had told him. Maybe things would be different. Things changed the morning I heard nothing. Nothing at all. It almost scared me more than the noises did, and I didn't even recognize it until I was halfway done with my morning routine. It was an eerie, dead silence. At the beginning of winter vacation, I would have begged for the silence, but now it felt out of place and uncomfortable. I almost wanted to call out to whatever it was, but how stupid would that have been to say, hello, to the thing that's been tormenting you for so long? I opted instead to lean in close to the door that separated my brother's room from his side of the bathroom. I placed my ear upon it, its coldness causing me to shiver as I listened intently. I sat there for a solid minute, steadying my breathing, desperate to know if it had left. And then I heard it, the sharp exhale of a breath so close and so loud, I was sure it was my own. But when I realized that I still held air in my lungs, I began to shake, my eyes moving down to the floor to see the shadow of something standing on the other side of the door. It had been listening to me, too. 
With a shriek, I flung myself away from the door, sobbing uncontrollably on the tile, my mouth gasping for air as I clutched my chest. My father must have heard the commotion, for he appeared behind me and scooped me up into his arms, trying to console me and begging me to tell him what happened. When I could breathe again, I lied to him. I fell off the counter, I gasped between sobs. It was really crazy. He responded by holding me tight to his chest as I stared at the door I had been leaning against only minutes ago. It had been listening to me too. After I calmed down enough to hold a conversation, I called my brother, who was still in the early hours of work. He didn't pick up the first time, so I called him again, desperate to at least hear his voice. Hello? What's up, sis? I can't talk long, okay? I have to get back to work. Can you come home? The words surprised me as they came tumbling out of my mouth. What? Why? I could hear the worried tone of my brother on the other side of the phone. Is everything okay? I just... I had started to cry again. I just need you right now. I like it better when you're here. Hey, hey, it's okay. I'll come home. Just wait right there, all right? I nodded softly before I remembered that Eddie couldn't actually see me. Okay. I love you. I heard a soft voice say from the other side of the phone. I love you too. And with that, I waited on the line, listening to his breathing before he hung up. And then I waited for him to come home. But he never did. Eddie had gotten into a car accident on the way here, and when we had gone to identify his body... The coroner assured us that his death had been instant and painless. But I knew he was lying. I knew Eddie had suffered. I could see it on his twisted face. No one blamed me, but I knew it was my fault. I knew I was the one who caused Eddie to die. I don't know how I lived with the guilt, especially when the sounds coming from the now forever empty room only served to taunt me further. Sometimes I even swore I could hear it laughing at me. The noises continued until I moved out, and being as I was the only one who could hear them, a thought still comes to mind. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? I wondered sometimes. If I had something that lives where I do when I'm not there, perhaps we all have something that takes up the empty space while we're away. And maybe, perhaps... That's what ghosts really are.